Hey guys, you want to go to the beach? I know I do. I'm artist Susan Jenkins in Monet Cafe, and today's tiny painting tutorial, we're still doing tiny paintings this month, is of a beautiful and refreshing beach scene. All right, let's go grab your swimsuits. I'm still using this pastel set. I'm gonna be talking about my supplies very soon, and I'm excited to bring you this pastel painting tutorial. So come on in the studio with me and Jackson, and we're gonna get started. I'd also really appreciate it if you would take a moment right now to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. And I'm able to keep these free lessons coming because of the support from my patrons on my Patreon page. If you would like to consider becoming a patron, it's only $5 a month and you get extra goodies and extra content. Let me quickly show you my supplies. This is the Jack Richardson Soft Pastels. They're called Hand Rolled. They're super soft that I've been using for a while now. I'll talk more about those. I also am going to be doing an underpainting. It's where, really where I'm just toning my pastel surface. I love this product. Golden Fluid Acrylics. Fluid because it's really fluid. It's kind of thinner. And I'm going to pop over here right now to my Amazon shop. I have a clickable link in the description of almost every video where you you can go to my Amazon shop and find a lot of the products that I talk about in my videos. Now the particular set of pastels, the Jack Richeson 40 half stick set of soft hand rolled pastels can be found as a product review in my Amazon shop. So if you want to learn a little bit more about those pastels, you can go down to my video reviews, my product reviews. I'm going to be making a lot more of these too. Unfortunately, it's the second one in. Um, you guys have loved this set I've been telling everybody about and it's sold out. So way to go guys. Y'all are really buying these pastels. But if you click on the video, you can see my product review. They're all very short. They're like five minutes long. So you can learn a whole lot just from my Amazon shop. And I'm going to continue to add more product reviews. Now, as I said, it is sold out currently unavailable, it says. But you can find this set on Dick Blick. It's a site I use a lot for art products for around $100. Now that might sound like a lot for pastel, soft pastel products, but you really do get what you pay for with soft pastels. And I know because I was right there with a lot of you guys as beginners, I could only afford a set of Rembrandt pastels when I first got started. And they're a lot more affordable. They don't quite have the punchy, vibrant colors. They're not as soft. Um, but let me show you another pastel product that is a great buy. This has been a really good buy on Amazon for a while. I also have these idea list in my Amazon shop if you scroll down. This one is called Beginner Basics for Pastel Artist. I share different papers. I share uh, different products. There's some products you can actually use to make your own pastel surfaces, products to do underpaintings. And I also have little captions that you can, the little thing in the top right corner of each one, you can just hover over it and it'll give you a caption of my description. And if you scroll down on this particular idea list that I have, you'll see it the, towards the bottom, there's a set that I still think is one of the best soft pastel purchases out there. It's a set by Sennelier. I love Sennelier pastels. It is 120 half sticks for about $140, $139. Now you saw that Jack Richeson was only 40 half sticks for $100. This is 120. The colors are gorgeous. Awesome. I also have a product. No, I don't have a product review video on that one, but I will soon. So uh, you can click those links again in the description of this video to find that. All right. That's some product information. Let's talk about the surface right now. I'll be using a little sanded piece of paper. This is artist trading card size, and it's a little sanded surface, and I'm going to be toning it. I'll talk a little bit more about the sanded surface in a minute, but oh, I'm almost out of this product because I love it so much. This is what's called an underpainting. I'm literally just toning this white pastel surface. The product, I'm also going to be doing a product review video on this product because I love it so much. It's called Golden Fluid Acrylics. Fluid because it's very fluid. It's um, it's not super. That's an old brush, right? Look at how tattered that brush is. But it doesn't matter. Um, but it's very um, it's very it flows nice and easily. I'm not diluting this with water. I'm just putting this beautiful color. 
It's called quinacridone nickel azo gold. That is a huge name for a color, but it is uh, huge in its beauty. I love this color. You can actually get it a to be a little lighter than I'm applying it here. If you use a sponge or a roll, uh, foam roller um, or just press a little bit harder, but I love this color. It makes such a nice underpainting color to so many landscape paintings. Now, very quickly before we start, I want to share some options in case you don't have this little piece of color fix paper. I have a video uh, where I demonstrate how you can make your own pastel surfaces. I basically use a piece of matte board and I use a concoction to recreate this same effect and make my own kind of gritty surface. And you can cut these to whatever size you want. It's a very practical and more affordable way to create your own pastel surface. So check out that video and just know there's so many options for recreating this painting. You don't even have to have the same surface that I'm using. The reference image I'm using is from a site I use often called unsplash.com. It's a great site for copyright free reference images. You have so many awesome photographers. This photographer is Christopher Maximilian. What a, an important sounding name. He's a handsome dude. And he says he's a photographer and educator living and working in the Pacific Northwest. I love working with new companies and people. Reach out. Now, he's got some awesome photography in here. So anyway, I love how art connects us from all different genres of art. Look, And now the underpainting is dry. And I'm just using a white charcoal pencil. Because the color is a little darker, I can use a white pencil to sketch. Now, I am just speeding up the sketch. Now, this is super basic. We're just getting in the general gesture of the clouds, the horizon line. I made a few little marks of uh, kind of where the water would be coming up on the shore and uh, where the little thin uh, wave of water is coming up. And that's just about all you need, okay? Because this is a teeny painting. Now, if you don't know much about teeny painting, watch some of my previous videos because that's what we've been doing all month here in Monet Cafe. And I actually have a lot of other uh, tutorials that focus on the benefits of tiny painting. The last one I did, I talked about like, I don't know, like 10 reasons why you should paint small. It is really going to help you as an artist. And there are many, many benefits to painting small. Now the rest of this is going to be real time. I am going to talk about my products. And I, I think I may have said at the beginning of this video, I almost exclusively used the Jack Richardson set, but I didn't. I used a majority of those of those pastels in that set. But as you can see here, these these more square ones, they're actually normally rectangular and I break them in half. These are Terry Ludwig pastels, another outstanding brand of soft pastels. Uh, this is another, I believe, Terry Ludwig. I think so. Sometimes, you know, you can't tell when you've used them so long. But all I'm doing is getting in the general shapes values, big shapes. I'm, I'm focusing on getting the big shapes in. I'm not getting all crazy about the little highlights on the clouds yet. I just want to block in the big shapes and the big color. Now here's something interesting. You see that color I'm doing with the sky right now? The sky isn't really that color in the reference image and it's okay to use your artistic license, but I know that I can kind of scumble another color over it to give some color interest. Also, I know that the sky often almost always gets warmer down at the horizon line, especially during the daytime, uh, because the sun is reflecting off of the horizon. You get more warmth. That's why I use that little bit of a teal color. I also know that in water, I recently, last month, I think it was last month, we talked about water, water everywhere. That was the focus of the month's theme. And I talked about how there's usually a little dark line on a horizon line of water with the ocean. Um, and I don't know why that is. If anybody knows the scientific reason for that, that would be interesting. Um, and now I'm just scumbling in some of the little lighter values here. I'm not getting too crazy about uh, the final uh, little highlights on the clouds. You'll see me do that more at the end. And, uh, you know, I was going to just play music and just let you guys watch me paint. I've been super tired lately. I don't know why I haven't been sleeping. I usually sleep pretty good, but any of you guys ever... You wake up in the middle of the night and you think about a million things. I think we all do that. But uh, you just try to turn your brain off and sometimes it just doesn't turn off. So I'm like uh, a zombie right now. But I just love sharing with you guys the techniques because I know so many of you don't have any other resources to learn art. That was me. That was my story of how Monet Cafe started. I wanted to 
Um, I always loved art <clears throat> when I was a kid. Man, I got excited about any birthday or any opportunity to get a present. I prayed it was some sort of art, art supplies. And so I always thought my dream job would be to be an artist. And I majored in graphic design. I, lo I actually love computers. I love video editing. I love gadgets. Um, so graphic design was a great mix for me. A little bit of art and a little bit of computer, you know, a happy mix. But um, <clears throat> I had the wonderful blessing of having three boys that are now men. And that became my best job in life. So you put your artistic aspirations on the back burner for a little while. But then I wanted to get back into art. And I had, we're talking 20 plus years ago, you didn't have all the resources you do now. I had a hard time finding out how to do this. So that's where my passion came from that once I started figuring it out, I thought, you know what, I, I love making videos, I'm just going to film myself. And uh, that's kind of the quick story of how Monet Cafe started. But that's the long answer as to why I just love talking to you guys because I know there's some of you out there hungry. You may be in an area of the world where you can't learn. Um, you may be financially in a position I was in. I, did, I couldn't afford to go get private lessons or workshops and all that. So anyway, <clears throat> rambling on, but I think some of you guys like that you mentioned. But then sometimes I get someone, <laughs> rarely, who says, you talk too much or... Um, this video uh, has too much talking and I'm like isn't this an instructional video but I think they mean my little tangents like I'm doing right now so okay really back to this painting um, <clears throat> this is a darker pastel it's the Terry Ludwig eggplant color and, oh I am wrong this is not this is one of the darker Jack Richesons the reason I could tell is it's round it's um, you know got a round shape and the Terry Ludwigs are rectangular or square. So this is a really nice dark that's in that Jack Richardson um, 40 half stick set. And usually trees are the darkest thing in a landscape painting. They're vertical. The sun's not hitting them on the sides. You know, they're kind of in shadow or sh in the shade, you know, because the sun's up high. And uh, so that's why they're typically darker. Now, I talk about this often in my videos. I usually put down a darker value first because I know I'm going to come back in with another color. It's gradually going to lighten up. These trees are not going to stay this dark, but it's a really good base color to start with. Um, now I'm adding some kind of grassy color down to the bottom of the trees. I know there's a little bit of land there and uh, typically I don't use something this warm in the distance this far, but uh, I am going to layer some other color on top of this as well. Now I'm just doing what's called negative painting. I'm kind of carving in behind some of the tree shapes with some of this pretty turquoise color. And you can see, I meant to talk about the color notes I have on my left side. I have them where you can pretty much see them in this video. But if you're a patron of mine, you're gonna get uh, an attachment. My patrons get, they get the YouTube video. Sometimes they get extra footage in the YouTube video, but they also get some extra goodies. They will get my color notes for the paintings with my code as to what all those little letters are. Um, and they also will get, often I'll take a reference image and I'll crop it, I'll change it. And it's different from the one that I share here and they get my cropped or my altered reference image. This one was pretty much the way you see it on Unsplash. Now I added a little bit of warmth down there, even though the, the underpainting is already very warm, I put another little brown. Now I'm adding a little bit of those uh, sand colors in the distance and I really just kind of zone out and look at the shapes. That's all I'm doing. I'm forgetting that I'm painting a beach. I'm just kind of squinting my eyes and looking at how some of the shapes and colors are, making some little directional strokes. And that's another one of the advantages of tiny painting that I shared in my last video is, uh, well, let me see if I can remember a few of them. One is that it, it helps you to keep a real painterly style. The painting's so small, you can't focus on many details. Two, you can do a lot of them. If your life is crazy, um, like mine has always been, uh, you can really feel a sense of accomplishment. You can get a few of these done. It's also great. The way you're going to get to be a better artist is to paint every day. It is great to paint every day or as much as you can because that's just truly the way you're going to get better. So it's hard to do that if you're doing really big paintings. So if you set yourself a goal to paint 30 paintings in a month, you know, have you, give yourself a little challenge do these tiny ones because otherwise you're probably not going to get it done and it's going to be frustrating. 
Um, I find tiny paintings are relaxing. So lots and lots of benefits to painting small. Now, I just added that taupe color that I just had in my hand. I had added it on the beach, but why do you think I would have added it in the clouds as well? Well, often your painting will feel more harmonious and connected if you repeat colors throughout. I mean, you don't have to go crazy with this, but also too, that's how physics works in nature is that anything that's in the sky has a little subtle reflection on the land often and most certainly on the water. So you get a kind of a similar color palette going on in sky and water and land. I almost always add some of my sky colors, even if it's a grassy landscape. Uh, if I've got some purples in the clouds, I'll pop some purple in the grasses somewhere. Um, now this is that really neat earthy green again. Um, and then I will add some more greens on top of that. Now I wanted to give these a little bit more shape like a palm tree. And um, so I'm giving kind of little uh, poofs up at the top and then I'll do a little more carving. Is, is that the right word? Poofs? <laughs> you could tell I'm tired, right? Um, and then I'll do a little more carving into them to um, get a little bit more of that shape. And it's hard to do much of that because look how little this is and look how big the pastels are. But usually you can just suggest things. That's all you have to do. You don't have to spell it all out. People get it. It's a beach. They're probably palm trees. Um, so, but this took probably about 30 minutes, maybe a little longer. Now the video is going to be shorter, even though this is real time, because I, I try to, um, edit out any little wasted time. You know, sometimes I'll get called away on something or I'll, I'll walk away from my easel for a minute. So I, I cut the video up for your convenience and viewing pleasure. And so it can be just painting time for you without a lot of pauses. Okay, now I'm adding some of that pretty turquoise, same color I added in the sky, again, uh, reflecting what's in the sky and the water. There was a little bit more of that um, royal kind of blue um, that was in the water. Again, a little darker horizon line because it's, this is the ocean. And um, then I'm just going to gradually put in some more color. Now, this is a green I almost never use. It's like an artificial kind of a green. But I popped a little bit of it in there because I thought it was just interesting. It gave a little bit of warmth to that water. It was a little warmer in, in color. It was closer to green than this color I'm using right here. And when you have tropical water or shallow water, you usually get a little more warmth. You get a little more of the turquoise or a little more of the green, especially lake water is usually more greenish in shallow water. This was all in our last month's um, lesson on um, our theme of water. So every month we kind of have a theme. Um, next month's theme I'm excited about. It's going to be awesome. And if you... Uh, of course, all these videos are free on Monet Cafe, but if you wanted to join the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook, there's over 15,000 people in that group, and everybody is so great. They share their artwork. You've got some really professional artists in that group, too, who'll give you some great advice. So you can get questions answered. So it's Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, um, check it out. It is a private group. Not everybody in the world is going to see your art, just the people in the group. Um, also, too, I have my own uh, page on Facebook. It's The Art of Susan Jenkins. That's my page, and I share a lot of things um, just from a artist standpoint. I have a personal page, too. but And I'm trying to build my Instagram following. If you want to follow me on Instagram, you can find me at Susan Jenkins Artist. And I share a lot of little reels. They're the little short videos of things and all kinds of fun stuff. So check it out. And uh, I hope you are learning. If you're a subscriber here on Monet Cafe, if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will. Uh, now I'm adding a little bit of the sand color still, breaking up that little bit of grassiness or whatever's right next to the trees. And just gently layering it in and giving that sense of direction as to how the sand would be coming across the beach and gradually coming in closer to the viewer. And now the painting is really pretty close to done and it's just time to add a few little final touches. I know that I want to create, I'm just lightening up the water a bit in some areas, I know that I want to create some foam. Um, even though the the reference image, it's so tiny here and the painting is so tiny, but I know there's a little bit of foam uh, happening with that uh, 
like wave that's coming up the beach. So I add a little bit of dark right there, which is actually kind of like a little shadow underneath that wave. And I thought I could actually kind of see some warm tones. I know this is probably tiny on your screen, but in the reference photo, I know the sand is warm. And I thus used kind of a, some browner tones underneath that. And then I just start adding um, some little dots and scumbles of lighter color. This isn't a white. It looks kind of white. It's almost like a gray white. And uh, just kind of dabbing that in in different places along that wave line, uh, meandering it in and out. And uh, obviously trying to keep things a little smaller as they recede into the distance and a, f a few little fun splashes of some waves as well. Now I like, I actually talked about this last month when the theme was water, I like if you look at the reference image, I like that little wetness of the sand. And notice that that final, it's not really a wave, it's just where the wave is receded. That little wet area is usually just a little bit darker than the sand itself. And so I love to use this color right here. It's it's almost like a, a magenta. It, it's a little warm, uh, but it's a little darker than the sand color. Just to create that wet um, wave or former wave that was on the sand. And now I'm going to finally go in and just look at where the sun is hitting some of these clouds. I don't want to overdo it. And also keep in mind, you don't have to follow the reference image exactly. When you learn some of the rules of focal point, you learn how to create a stronger composition by not adding everything. I know that I don't want to add too much detail along the edges of my painting. What that does is it pulls the viewer's eye right out of the painting. Um, so I usually try to keep things very subtle um, towards the edges of the painting and it does, it acts like a, a halo effect or an ellipse effect where your eye stays contained in the painting and the other elements cause your eye to kind of dance around. Uh, so you have that control and it may seem overwhelming at first, to know all of these things and goodness gracious it sure did to me I was like what you know how do I do that but trust me the more you paint the better you get and the more of these things that start to come together they become second nature to you and you're not even thinking about them anymore that might sound like a, a tall order right now if you're brand new but that's the reason why painting often is such a key to becoming a better artist. And that's once again, why painting small is such a huge benefit. Now I'm adding a little bit more um, interest to the trees, a little bit of that green, you can see in the reference image, it was like one of those days where the sun was shining in right behind some of those clouds. And uh, it actually did warm up some of the greens in the background. Again, reestablishing some of the darks. I'm not going to keep it this dark. Um, you've got quite a bit of uh, capability to still layer with this particular surface. Um, I used a Prismacolor, you can actually see the number there. It was a 313 Prismacolor New Pastel. These are harder sticks. They're still soft pastels, but they're a little harder. Sorry for my shaking easel. Um, and they allow you to get in finer lines, as in creating your little signature there so here's the final little painting now this is zoomed in way close you can see the influence of that gorgeous golden color peeking through I thought it made the perfect underpainting color for this beach scene it really brightened it up and made it fun so I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial check out the previous videos I have so many tiny painting videos I've uploaded already this month believe it or not I have more I'm running out of month though so this one was fun I used metallic watercolor and iridescent pastels and then I'm going to show you hopefully if I can get to this video how to repurpose a failed painting this was a little piece of UART paper I washed it off literally in the sink and thought I'd get a little abstract so those are still coming but man get ready for the month of April I have a fun theme coming if you haven't subscribed please do that like this video and leave me a comment believe it or not that really helps the success of this video and I appreciate you being here in our happy place and as always, God bless and happy painting.